Hi, Pastor Mark. I have a question today about the volcano, the Tal volcano that's erupting in the Philippines. Um, we read in the Bible and in prophecy about future events, and nature seems to be all out of course uh, right now. And uh, I'm just wondering, you know, does, is this significant? Does this point to anything biblically speaking? You know, Matt, um, I was looking at the news reports this morning. The Tal volcano um, is one of the major active volcanoes in the Philippines. It's, it's a smaller volcano, actually. Uh, but they, over the last few days, it's been spewing out ash, and uh, half a million people uh, are under evacuation orders. But just this morning on January 13, when we're taping this program, uh, the volcano has now erupted. 30,000 people are in the immediate danger zone. Uh, the last time a major volcano like this in the Luzon erupted was in 1977. You know, I held an evangelistic series in the Luzon, not far from the Mayon volcano, the most perfectly cone-shaped volcano in the world. Just to give you a little background, though, of this particular Tal volcano, it's about 65 miles from Manila at the airport, and the ash has been going through the air. Um, they've had to ground 500 flights in the Philippines because of it. The airport has been closed. Um, the Red Cross is issuing thousands and thousands of masks for people because evidently the danger from this particular volcano is not so much the flowing lava, but it's the ash that can travel hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of kilometers an hour. Um, you asked a question about how this relates to Bible prophecy. I wouldn't say that the eruption of one volcano is a great indication that the end of the world is coming, but when you put the pieces of the puzzle together, that's what becomes most troubling and most enlightening. You look at things like the rapid rise of hurricanes, natural disasters, tornadoes, uh, floods. You look at the global warming, the melting of the polar ice caps. There are many scientists who believe that it's a result of the melting of the polar ice caps that the sea levels are going to rise that uh, cities along the coastal area of the world are going to be inundated with water. Uh, I know here in the United States, we've had an unusual amount of uh, tornadoes that have come through and destroyed cities. Uh, weather patterns seem to be just a very haywire today. And so how do we see all that? Does the Bible have anything to say about nature uh, before the coming of Christ? Romans, the eighth chapter is quite an amazing uh, passage. Romans chapter 8, and you're looking at verse 18, rather verse 22 and onward. Uh, these verses tell about groaning, um, and there are three groanings. So Romans 8, 22 says, we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. The whole creation it will be groaning before the coming of Christ. Well, that's what these earthquakes are. It's the groaning of the earth. That's what these uh, great volcanic eruptions are. It's the groaning of the earth. It's uh, global warming. It, it is nature's groaning, the longing to be delivered. And it's interesting, too, verse 23 says, not only they, that is not only nature, but we also have the first, first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for eagerly, waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. So nature is groaning, and within us we are groaning. Because when we see the sickness, the suffering, the death around us, our hearts groan, that is, they cry out. Then it's interesting, there's the third groaning here. It says that the Holy Spirit uh, presents our prayers before God in intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. So the Holy Spirit takes our prayers, our groanings, and presents them before God. And we say, like Revelation says at the end, surely the Lord Jesus come quickly. So what do I see with all these natural disasters? What do I see when the, Isaiah says, the earth is waxing old like a garment? I see all of nature pointing forward to the great climactic day when Christ indeed is going to come. In fact, Jesus talked about nature both in Matthew 24 and in Luke 21. In Matthew 24, Jesus said there'd be famines, earthquakes, pestilences, in other words, natural phenomena. Luke chapter 21, 
Jesus puts it this way. He says, there'll be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, and on the earth, this is verse 25 and 26, distress of nations with perplexity and the sea roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear in the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. Um, I was reading a news report today about the Tal volcanic eruption, and it tells the story of a woman, and she talks about her fear and her anxiety as they see this volcano erupting. And she said, I have nothing left. My house is gone. I don't know where my father is. You know, it says here in Matthew 21, 26, men's hearts failing them for fear. I mean, I think of the people as we are doing this program that are running in fear, crying out in horror. Why? Because everything behind them is gone. The lava has taken away their houses and, and they've lost loved ones. Men's hearts failing for fear and the expectation of things that are coming on the earth. The powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they'll see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now somebody says, haven't we always had war, rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, uh, tornadoes? We have. The difference, I think, today is that we see these things taking place with increasing magnitude, increasing frequency, and we see them on a universal worldwide scale. Whether it's famine in Africa, whether it's pestilences destroying our crops, whether it is volcanic eruptions, whether it's earthquakes, whether it's global warming that's so much talked about by government agencies today, we see these things rapidly happening. What does the Bible say? What did Jesus say about his people when we see these events taking place? I think there are two passages that are very helpful. One is in Matthew 24, and the other is the Apostle Paul's statement in 1 Thessalonians 5. In Matthew 24, Jesus says this. He says, when you see these things come to pass, watch therefore, verse 42, for you do not know about what hour your Lord is coming, but know this. If the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and be ready. Therefore, be you also ready for an hour that you don't expect the Son of Man is coming. What is this saying to us? It is saying that, in fact, Jesus says here that the evil servant says in his heart that the Lord is not coming soon. So what is Jesus calling us to do when he says watch, when he says be ready? He's calling us to live with expectation. He's calling us to live with this sense of his return. Will he come in a year, three years, five years, 15 years? We don't know. We don't know the timing, but we live in expectation. We live in the glorious hope of his return. And that's what Jesus meant, I think, when Jesus put it this way in, through the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Jesus through the Apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit, speaks to us in 1 Thessalonians. And he tells us that we have a decided advantage as the people of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Jesus says, When they say peace and safety, another word for safety is security, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so the day should overtake you as a thief. Your sons of the light, sons of the day, were not in, of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let's watch and be sober. So the Bible says, look, you are children of the light. When you see these events happening, war, famine, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, pestilences, earthquakes, these natural disasters, cling to the hope of the coming of Christ. You are not in darkness. You are children of the light. Ellen White, who I believe wrote with prophetic insight in, the, in a, vi a series of volumes called The Testimonies to the Church, in volume 8, page 28, says this, We who know the truth should be preparing for what is soon to break upon the earth as an overwhelming surprise. That really is a good complement to what Paul said, that you're children of the light, not of the darkness. Be sober, be awake. What does the rumbling of one volcano in Philippines say to God's people today? It says this is part of a pattern. Cling to the hope of the second coming of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching. My name is Matt Gray. I'm the media director for Hopeless 365. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified when we create new videos.